Welcome to the third example from chapter seven. So this is the picture and words directly from our slide. It's um, slide 25 in our chapter seven um, slide deck. And it looks quite complicated. And this one looks like almost a chapter four force problem, then paired with something about chapter two kinematics. This is a problem that we have the capability to answer before we get to chapter seven, but it takes a lot of steps. We will see that we can handle this one quite easily with the only hiccup being um, we have to pay close attention to the work term, but we can handle it quite easily with our chapter seven techniques. So we wanna draw this into our notes and it's worth adding a couple of key things here. First of all, this 0.4 meters that is the height, the vertical height. And this 1.2 meters is the distance, D, along the ramp from the start to the finish. This 30 degree angles, uh, this 30 degree angle is going to matter quite a bit. This 19.5 degree angle doesn't matter at all for our purposes. And we wanna make sure we recognize why that won't matter for um, our equations. So as always, when we draw the picture, we also want to label what we mean by before and what we mean by after so that when we are asking ourselves the yes or no question, we're not trying to guess. We are simply looking at the drawing that we've made and analyzing it. So before and after. So we have the same process that we've seen twice already a drastically new situation that we're looking at, but the same exact process. And as always, our goal is to make sure that we understand how the same process is applied each time, even if the situations look different. We're not trying to memorize this specific situation so that the next time we pull a mass up with an angled force, we can handle it. Instead, we are trying to understand the process so that we can deal with any situation that we're given. So kinetic energy, that question is, are we moving? So in the before situation, we ask ourselves, are we moving? We reread the question and we learn that we start from rest, which means that that is a definitive no, we are not moving. We ask ourselves, are we moving at the end of the problem? And that's a absolute yes, because that's what we're trying to find. This is what I mean when we say that these should be clear yes or no questions to ask, and it shouldn't be confusing if we are spending the time looking at the picture that we've drawn and reading the question for that information. We ask ourselves, are we higher, the potential energy from gravity, are we higher at the beginning of the problem? We're at the bottom of that ramp. The answer here is no. Are we higher at the end of the problem? Definitely. We've gone up the ramp. So we have MGH because we said yes here. I'm gonna to continue to add this so that we train ourselves ahead of time, even if we haven't dealt with the potential energy term yet. There are no springs in this problem. We haven't talked about them in chapter seven yet, although we um, will soon, but we wanna rec recognize that that is gonna be in our situations soon. So, Underneath the before and after column, it's neither a before nor an after, it's a separate additional term, we ask about work. So when we are looking for a work term, it's a yes or no, and it's based on is there some external force acting here that we haven't dealt with yet. And if we think about all of the possible forces, gravity is a force that is acting here, but we have already dealt with that force by having a potential energy of gravity term. Normal force is a force that exists here, but it is perpendicular to the ramp, which means it is not at all in the direction of motion. But we do have a work term from our force that we are applying. So we say yes from our pull force and we will make sure we understand how to deal with that, but that will come up um, in our full equation. So we've gone through this process of asking ourselves all these yes or no questions so that we can use the exact same tool that we've been using so far. 
Energy before plus work added equals energy after. The difference here is simply that even if we hadn't quite noticed that there was a force here, the fact that we started with zeros in all of the types of energy we can look for would have been our big clue that there had to be something available to be giving our block energy in order to speed it up and move it uphill. All right, so here is our tool, and now we can throw in all of the yeses and nos that we put. For energy before, we had a lot of situations where we answered no for ourselves. For work added, we said yes, so instead of putting zero, let's put work for one term, and we'll come back to that. And for energy after, we have one half mv squared. We're looking for that speed, plus mgh plus zero. So again, all we're doing is plugging in all the hard work that we put in already in this nice organized little table. Now, here we need to come back to the work term. Work is equal to the force in the direction of motion, force in the direction of motion times the distance. I have mentioned before, and I will continue to mention it, that this is a much better way to think about force, uh, to think about work than the equation from the book, which is that work is F times D times cosine theta. The reason why this one is a problem is because sometimes we won't know what theta to put in here. A lot of students who use this and continue to not hear me say that this is the better way to think about it with the actual concept involved will put in this incorrect theta because that is a, an angle, but it's the wrong angle. That's not telling us about the angle between the direction we're moving and the force. That's what the 30 degrees is. So here we need to make sure we know that that's 30 degrees, but instead, here's the really important part, instead, if we are thinking about this as a component of the force that is in the direction of motion, the x component, so fx, that fx term, I'm going to write it over here on the far left, is the full 20 newtons times the cosine of 30 degrees. This understanding of what we mean by in the direction of motion, we get that cosine of 30 degrees naturally, instead of trying to guess at which angle we're given goes into this spot. That's why this is by far the better way to think about this. So in this particular case, work is 20 times the cosine of 30 degrees. And then the distance we've already labeled, but just to be clear, it's the distance along the ramp, which is 1.2. We get the same result as the book problem, but we actually understand our result. And that is by far the most important thing we can, um, we can do. All right, so over here with the work term, we have the 20 cosine 30 degrees times the 1.2. I want to put it in here so we can see where it comes from. And then we can plug in the right side. We have 1 half times the mass is 2 kilograms times V squared. V is our unknown plus 2 times 9.8 times, and then the height here is 0 0.4 meters, 0.4. All right, so on the left, our work term, we can plug that into our calculators. We get 20.8 equals, then 1 half times 2 is 1. We get V squared, and then this term in our calculators is 7.84. So we can subtract 7.84 on both sides. All right, running out of room here at the bottom. But what we have now on the left, we have 12.96. Some rounding differences is fine. And on the right, we just have v squared. So if we take the square root of that on both sides, we get that 3.6 meters per second right here at the bottom. But I'm saying it out loud, 3.6 meters per second is our speed at the top of the ramp. 
So we're pulling it up the ramp, um, but we aren't pulling it um, with that much force. So it's had some time to speed up from zero, but not a whole lot. We would be able to get this same answer if we used chapter four to get the acceleration using F net X equals MA along the ramp. And then we would have to use that acceleration in a, um, an equation from chapter two, the VX equation, and we would be able to get this result. Lots of steps for that. Not so many steps here. If we actually look back at what we've done, lots of labeling in the drawing, lay laying out this um, yes and no questions in our table isn't a lot of math, but it is a lot of thinking, and that's really our goal here in this course. We plug in numbers. There's not all that much algebra with these types of problems. It's just making sure that we plug stuff into the calculator right, and then a couple of steps to solve for our final answer. But all of the physics is right at this spot here. When we get this written down, that's where the physics really is. Uh, and when we get the work term specifically, the 20 cosine 30 degrees times 1.2, that's probably the most commonly missed part of this type of problem. And so it's the one that's worth the most points if we get it wrong on a homework or a test. That's where we really care and we're really able to see whether we're understanding this term or not. So as always, Try to see how these problems relate to each other, how they're similar to each other from one to another throughout chapter seven. And I will see you in the next example video.